Hello everyone, welcome back to today's video. Be sure to like, share, and check out the author Kira as again they have some really good work. The link will be in the description down below. And with that let's begin. Chapter 15 It's yours. Izuku walks into the waiting room before his match. He expects it to be empty. What he doesn't expect is to find Yuraka sitting on one of the chairs. She seems lost in thought. He clears his throat in order to get her attention. Uh, Deku-kun, I guess I lost. She says, rubbing her neck sheepishly, seemingly back to her old bubbly attitude. It's a huge difference from the fierceness the world witnessed not long ago. I just got carried away at the end when I thought I could actually win. But I'm okay. Recovery girl healed me. It's fake though. Her smile. Izuku has seen that smile too many times in the past. Every time he stared in the mirror after a particularly bad day, he'd always wear that smile to hide the pain he was feeling. His mother would get annoyed otherwise. I just have to try harder next time. Iraka. He approaches her wordlessly before she gets to finish her sentence. He wraps his arms around her, pulling her into a firm embrace. He gives her just enough space to feel comfortable but his hold is firm. She needs to know that she doesn't have to put up an act with him. Iraka stills at first. Izuku thought he's done something wrong. However, as soon as her initial shock is over, she melts into his hold and sobs on his shoulder. Iraka's whole body shudders as she cries in his arms. I, I gave it everything I had still it wasn't enough. Her voice is raw with emotions. She falters at some of the words in order to catch her breath. It's okay. You were amazing out there. You gave Kakin a run for his money. You need to give yourself a break. He reassures her, rubbing circles on her back. He pulls away. Holding her by the shoulders at arm's lengths, he needs to look at her when he's saying this. Yoraka, you're going to be an amazing hero. I believe in you. His voice is steady and unwavering as he tried to convey the sincerity behind his statement. It seems she got the message. As she only sobs harder and jumps at him, arms wrapping around his shoulders as she thanks him over and over again. Afterward, they sit down and discuss her strategy and how she might improve next time. Before long, present Mike announces the beginning of the next round. It's time for his match with Todoroki. I, I have to go, he says quietly, dread filling his stomach as he thinks of the battle ahead of him. Thanks for being here for me Deku. Good luck out there I'm rooting for you. She replies her smile back to being genuine and her demeanor returning to her old bubbly self. He walks towards the arena, going over the strategies he'd come up with to fight Todoroki. He rounds the corner and abruptly bumps into someone. He feels like he's burning up when he makes contact. The feeling is gone as soon as it came through and he finds himself face to face with none other than the number two hero, Endeavor. The flame hero stares down at him. His hulking figure towers over him, his posture intimidating and his presence dominating the whole space. There you are. I saw what you did out there. That's an amazing quirk. I'd say it's on par with All Might's. However, my boy Shoto has a duty to surpass All Might. His match against you will prove a valuable test. You may have won the other tasks, but don't let it get to your head. The hero says, his voice low and threatening. It sends chills down his spine. Izuku feels the anger boiling inside of him. How could a father talk about his own son as if he was just a tool, a means to an end? Although knowing his own mother and his absent father, it's not that strange. The flaming hero turns to leave but stops when Izuku speaks up. I'm not all might, Izuku states seriously. Well, of course, you're not. And Todoroki isn't you either. The hero stares at him for a moment, taking in his words. He goes to speak but Izuku cuts him off once again. Don't you realize what an idiot you are? You're only pushing your son away. What you're doing is wrong. You call yourself a hero but your actions are that of a villain. Heroes are supposed to save people, comfort them, not hurt them. Izuku tried to rein in his fury but the words seemed to just spill from his mouth. How dare you speak his shouting is interrupted once again by Izuku's blunt march past him. I don't care about what you have to say. Now, goodbye. I have a match to get to. With that, Izuku takes his leave, marching angrily into the arena, ignoring the dumbstruck expression he left on the number two hero's face. Both of these competitors have shown great power in the previous matches. Midoriya's winning streak hasn't faltered until now. What will happen when faced with the number two hero's son? This round we have. Izuku Midoriya vs Todoroki Shoto. The crowd roars as present Mike announced the beginning of the second round. Izuku stares at Todoroki. The boy looks like his usual expressionless self his features remaining neutral and stoic. However, Izuku doesn't fail to notice the barely visible flinch the boy has when his father is mentioned. Start. Instantly, Izuku is attacked by a rapidly approaching wave of ice. He fires up one for all through his body and swiftly dodges the attack, ducking and rolling to the side. He barely has time to straighten up before another wave of ice comes rushing at him once again. This time, he doesn't have enough time to dodge. He lifts his arm and flicks two fingers in the direction of the coming shards. The shockwave he creates thoroughly destroys the glaciers. W-O-A-H. He smashed right through. What power? Present Mike exclaims excitedly as the crowd cheer in amazement. 
He feels a small throbbing in his fingers. It's not broken but it's not unharmed either. It will take more than his current level of control over one for all to win against Todoroki. He realizes that Todoroki still isn't using his left side. The boy still adamant on only using his ice. They keep at it for a couple of minutes, Todoroki firing off rounds of ice, one after the other and Izuku swiftly dodging them or destroying them. From an outsider's point of view, they match each other in terms of power. However, Izuku can see the way Todoroki's right side is slowly icing over, his whole body shivering slightly. He can even feel the way the ice is slowing down. Not quite as powerful as they initially were. Every quirk has its limit. Izuku thinks he knows Todoroki's. You're planning on stretching out the match. Not happening I'll end this quickly. The ice user says, voice low and cold as he fires off another round of ice towards him. He uses it as a distraction and rushes at Midoriya. Todoroki is undaunted by Midoriya's powers. He moves in to close the gap. Midoriya sees the way Todoroki leaps at him and effectively dodges as he jumps backward using a small amount of one for all. He needs to make sure not to get over his limit. Close one. But Midoriya dodges in an incredible show of reflexes. He's not even on the ground yet and another wave of ice comes barreling towards him. He has no choice but to power up his fist with all for one. Surprisingly the backlash is minimal. Only a dull throbbing makes itself known. It isn't broken but he can't keep this up much longer. He smashes the glaciers coming his way. The power now, much stronger than his previous shockwaves. The outburst sends Todoroki flying a couple of meters back but he manages to catch himself with ice to stop himself from crossing the boundary line. Todoroki is way more than just his quirk. Izuku realizes. He's got an excellent judgment, execution and mobility. Everything about him is strong. Why are you going so far to win this? Todoroki shouts from across the arena. His breathing is ragged and he keeps glancing at the stands, probably looking for endeavor. Here's shivering Todoroki. Izuku's control may be slipping but until now, Todoroki hasn't put a single scratch on him. Quirks are just physical abilities. You must have a limit to how much of that cold you bear. But then, you can always use your left side to thaw yourself out, right? He clenches his throbbing fist. Frustration and anger radiating off his every movement. Everyone is giving it their all. He remembers Yuraraka's fight to win. He remembers Shinsu's determination to achieve their goals. He thinks about Bakugou to reach the top. And you're only using half your power. He screams, his voice raw with pure and unfiltered emotions. Izuku waits for Todoroki to come rushing at him again. As soon as his foot is lifted in the air to move, Midoriya takes it's his opportunity to go on the offensive. He dashed towards the half and half quirk user and lands a punch to his abdomen. The force sends the teen tumbling backward. However, Todoroki quickly gets back to his feet. Come at me with everything you've got. Izuku shouts trying to convey his intentions. What are you saying? I thought you of all people would understand. Todoroki's voice loses its usual cold and neutral tone. He's angry and it's palpable from a mile away. I do understand. Our parents don't determine who we are. I want to be a hero and no one will stop me. Don't let your father's actions influence yours. Don't you see? You're letting him win. Izuku doesn't care anymore about the repercussion that will follow after he admits this to Todoroki. Right now, all he cares about is helping him. My mother will not determine what I am. Neither will yours. I want to be a hero to help those like me. To smile in the face of despair. That's why I'm giving it my all. To become a hero people will look up to. A hero that will prevent people like me and you from hurting anymore. Todoroki doesn't know how he forgot. However, now, as Midoriya screams at him, he remembers it like it was yesterday. He remembers his mother showing him All Might on the television. He remembers wanting to become a hero just like him. He remembers his mother's smile as she hugs him and reassures him that if he wants to, he could be a hero. It's your power Todoroki, not his. Just like that, as if a switch had been turned on. Todoroki's left side erupts in bright and scorching hot flames. The magnitude and intensity of the fire blinding the crowd and leaving them speechless at the incredible show of power the boy is showing. The ice that had gathered on his right side slowly thaws out as he regains some of his strengths. I want to be a hero too. Todoroki screams at the top of his lungs. The sounds muffled by the crackles of the flames around him. Izuku can't help the smile that stretches across his features as he stares at the beautiful scorching red fire that dances in front of him. Incredible. You must be crazy Midoriya. To help your opponent in a match like this, Todoroki's features reflect Izuku's own smile as he forgets for once in his life everything about his father. It's like, at this moment, the whole arena is gone. The only people present are him and Midoriya. Nothing else matters. They tune out the crowd's uproar and focus solely on their fight. Midoriya, give me everything you've got. Todoroki shouts with all his might. Midoriya dashes towards him. Green sparks dance around his whole body as he rushes straight at him. Todoroki extends his left hand, directing the flames at Midoriya. In the background, Midnight shouts something intangible, something about the fight. They're too occupied though, to give it much attention. 
Thank you, Izuku. Todoroki whispers just as Midoriya's fist connects with his left cheek. Cementos. The concrete hero decides to step in then, creating multiple walls of concrete to separate the two opponents. It all happens in an instant. The stadium erupts, a shockwave blowing both heated wind and cold air at the spectators as they hold on in order to not get blown away. People stare in awe and shock at the destruction left behind the two opponents. Smoke covers the arena, nobody knows what happened yet. What the what's with your class eraser head? Present Mike shouts from his place on the floor, where he'd been promptly blown away. All the chilled air was heated in an instant, making it expand. That and the shockwave created by Midoriya's punch. Aizawa explains calmly, his voice somewhat betraying his indifference and showing his shock. What a blast. And what heat. Can't see a thing though. Has the match been decided? The voice hero asks through the speakers, his curiosity mirroring the thoughts of everyone in the arena. The smoke clears ever so slowly and from the dust two figures are visible. Todoroki and Midoriya are both still standing. However, Todoroki has one foot out bounds whereas Midoriya is still inside. Todoroki is out of bounds. Midoriya advances to the next round. Midnight announces, her voice wavering as she tries to get over her shock from the fight she'd just witnessed. As soon as she pronounces those words, Midoriya wobbles on his feet but manages to catch himself before he falls. Todoroki isn't so lucky though. Darkness consumes the fire and ice user as he hits the ground with a thud. Izuku feels the adrenaline slowly fade away as he stares at the onslaught of cheers and the uproar coming from the crowd. He can feel his whole body aching. His arm is throbbing, probably fractured or in the least severely bruised. However, he can't bring himself to care about it right now. He helped Todoroki. He was able to free the boy from his father's cruel expectations, finally making him use his fire and accept himself fully and unleash all those years' pent-up emotions. Todoroki is currently being carted away by some medical robots, probably to recovery girl's office. Izuku follows the bots into the hallway, glad to get out of the spotlight. As soon as he steps into the infirmary he gets whacked on the head with a cane. Young man, you almost gave me a heart attack. Stop being so reckless. She huffs and turns to face the bots carrying the still unconscious Todoroki. She checks on him, writing things down on the small notepad she's clutching in her hands. She nods to herself seemingly satisfied before turning her attention back to Izuku. He has a concussion and a few cracked ribs. He should be okay after a round of healing. She says it and Izuku feels a weight being lifted from his shoulders. He was afraid he might have gone overboard in this battle. Recovery girl looks him over, checking for any kind of serious wound. When she finds none in need of immediate attention, she quickly kisses his forehead in precaution and goes back to helping the slowly waking boy on the stretcher. Todoroki's eyes flutter open. He looks around sluggishly. His eyes widen comically as he seems to realize where he was. He stopped from shooting upright by recovery girl's small arms holding his shoulders down. She scolds him for his reckless behavior and informs him about his injuries. The boy calms down and finally notices Izuku. He looks at him for a moment then looks back at recovery girl. The elderly woman seems to get the message. She steps out in order to give them a chance to talk. Todoroki, I am sorry his apology is promptly interrupted by Todoroki's raspy voice peeking up. Thank you Midoriya. His voice is soft, tone serious. Todoroki looks at him. Heterochromatic eyes seem to be gazing into his very soul as he tries to convey his gratitude. You made me realize my mistakes and helped me remember something I have long since forgotten. He smiles at him, a genuine smile. A huge difference from the ever-present scowl he had in the past weeks they've known each other. Izuku stutters out a response but whatever he says is overlapped by present Mike's announcement of the next match. He's going to be fighting Ida. He bids the fire and ice user goodbye and once again apologizes before scurrying towards the arena's entrance. Going against Ida won't be easy. The boy has been surrounded by heroes for most of his childhood. His brother, Ingenium, the turbo hero is known for respectable hero work, training his whole life with the help of his older brother. Izuku's going to have to give it his all once again. Not that he was ever planning on doing anything else. Unbeknown to him, just as he steps into the arena, a green-haired woman is turning the television off in her apartment. She gets into her car. Her hands are clenched and digging into the steering wheel. She seems to be seizing with anger. After an amazing battle that got Bakugu to move to the finals, it's time to see who he will go against. Without further ado, it's Tenya Ida versus Izuku Midoriya. Present Mike's shouting shakes the very foundation of the stadium. The crowd cheers and applaud for the two hero core students. Midoriya steps into the arena, a strange feeling welling up in his chest. This was it, he was so close to the final. Ida looks at him head on, gaze serious and challenging. Both of these competitors have proven themselves to be tough opponents. Ida's FAMILLY's background and heroics and Midoriya's undeadered winning streak. It's going to be an interesting fight. Opponents in position. Start. The voice hero booms through the speakers. As soon as present Mike announces the start of the fight, Ada is already rushing towards Midori. He's fast. 
Too fast, Izuku thinks. However, if he plays this right, he'll get the opening he needs to finish this. Ada retracts his leg at an unbelievable speed and uses his engines to enhance the power behind the head. His leg collides with Izuku's guarded arm. The latter had put it up in a mock defense attempt. The hit is painful, a loud crack can be heard. Wow, that kick was insanely fast. He landed a really solid hit. The voice hero comments. Ada seems to reel back, clearly not expecting Izuku to take the blow head on. Izuku takes this brief moment of hesitation and powers up his body. He powers through the pain in his arm. One for all flows through his veins as he swipes his opponent's legs from under him. Ada tumbles forward, avoiding crossing the boundary by a few meters only. He regains his composure and instantly goes in for another kick. This time he's planning on using his special move, Recipro Burst. Izuku sees right through the move though. He waits for the perfect moment. Just as Ada's leg lift of the ground, he rushes forward, sliding right into the hero student's path. Said student loses his bearings and having used the gears on his leg to their full potential, his engine stalls. This sends him running straight into the wall outside the ring. Midnight announces Izuku as the winner. He just wished he could have done it without hurting his friend. He runs towards Ada, apologies quickly threatening to spill from his mouth. However, he remembers what Todoroki had told him. He doesn't want his friend's effort to be overlooked. So, he wordlessly offers his hand to the fallen teen and waits patiently for the taller boy's response. Ada looks up at him. His frustration is palpable but he accepts his outstretched hand without missing a beat. I can honestly say that you have beaten fair and square. You used my own special move against me. Despite my frustration at winning, I am glad it was against such a formidable opponent Midori. Ada says sternly, his fist is clenched but, in his eyes, Izuku spots a new fire. One that screams determination. He's sure that Ida will take this loss at a stride and will improve and work hard to win next time. Izuku doesn't expect anything less from his friend. Izuku walks back to the waiting lounge. He just needs to clear his head for a little while. He'll be fighting Kakin next. They have roughly a 20-minute break before the fight. He walks into the break room and freezes. His blood ran cold, shivers running down his spine as his eyes meet a similar set of emerald irises. His mother stares back at him, the look in her eyes promising nothing but pure and unadulterated pain. Ladies and gentlemen, at last we've arrived. The best of the best among you as first years will be decided. It's the final match Midoriya versus Bakugu. Wait, what? Low whispering can be heard through the microphone, too quiet to decipher. Midoriya has withdrawn due to family circumstance. The winner of this year's sports festival is none other than Bakugu Katasuki. The crowd boos and shout in indignation. Bakugu stares straight at the empty place where the useless nerd should have been. He can feel the anger building up in his chest. This isn't a win. It's not even close. Meanwhile, at another place in the stadium, a purple-haired teenager is running at full speed towards the announcement stand, his expression serious and urgent as he slams the door to the viewing room open, visibly startling the two occupants. The racer head. You need to save him. He's in danger. Chapter 16 Forgive me. Aizawa was going to the vendor's machine in the hallway to buy himself a cup of coffee when he was met with a rather slim woman. She had olive green hair wrapped in a small ponytail. Her green eyes looked vaguely familiar. The familiarity was explained when another tuft of green hair appeared in his line of vision. Oh, it was Midoriya. That explains the familiarity. The resemblance was uncanny, except he's never seen that look in Midoriya's eyes. It was unsettling, to say the least. The woman was scowling but as soon as she spotted him, her features contorted themselves into a smile. It didn't quite reach her eyes though. On the other hand, Izuku had his head down. He seemed to be trying to make himself as small as possible. The woman spoke, her tone serious and unwavering. Hello, I'm Inko Midoriya. You must be one of the teachers of UA. Hello, yes, I'm Aizawa Shouta. I'm actually your son's homeroom teacher. He replied slowly, his tone neutral despite the feelings of unease he was experiencing. Well, if you would be kind enough, we have a family emergency and I'd like for him to be able to come with me. She half ordered. He could tell she was in a hurry. Mrs. Midoriya, your son has a match next. He's going to have to stay put and compete in the finals. What's the emergency, may I ask? He questioned cautiously. Something didn't feel right about this. It is a personal matter I'm afraid. However, I'm his mother and I believe I have the right to retrieve the brat by my son anytime I want. Aizawa didn't miss the way she faltered as she tried to address her son. He responded nonetheless. She was right after all. Very well. I hope any problem you have will be sorted soon. He stepped aside, clearing the way for the family of two. The boy seemed to suddenly look up at him. In his eyes, Aizawa swore he saw a light getting dimmer. The feeling of unease only increased. She nodded towards him and made her way towards the exit. Aizawa looked at the woman as she marched past him over to the stadium door. She had a hand placed on Midoriya's shoulder. The boy's whole body seemed stiff and uncomfortable. He tried to make eye contact with his student, only succeeding to catch a small glimpse of his expression. Something didn't feel right. 
Something was wrong. The boy's face was blank but solemn as if he was being marched towards his own demise. Maybe he was just upset for having missed the final despite having come so far. However, deep down, Aizawa knew there was something greater at work. He would make sure to find out what. He walked back to the viewing room in order to inform the other teachers of the newest development. Ladies and gentlemen, at last we've arrived. The best of the best among you as first years will be decided. It's the final match Midoriya versus Bakugu. Wait, what? Low whispering can be heard through the microphone, too quiet to decipher. Midoriya has withdrawn due to family circumstances. The winner of this year's sports festival is none other than Bakugu Katasuki. Mike turns the mic off and turns toward his colleague. Aizawa slumped on his chair. He looks thoughtful, worried. I'm sure everything will be fine. It's not the first time someone withdraws from the competition. At least his mother is with him. Whatever happened, he's not alone. He tries to comfort his friend but the scowl on the latter's face only deepens. It's just that woman. Something felt wrong. She had this vibe. I could just tell she was lying. Something is wrong Yamada. She felt wrong fake. Mike is left speechless. It's the first time he's seen his best friend so blatantly concerned and worried. If he thinks there's something wrong, then surely something must be. We can check on them later if you want. Maybe give young Midori a call. We can't just jump to conclusions though. It's a shame the boy couldn't go through the final battle. Bakugu is sure to be pissed off. Yeah, knowing him, he probably won't take this as a win. Aizawa stated with an exasperated sigh. They both turn towards their desks, ready to proceed with the awarding ceremony. Their actions are interrupted by the door to the viewing room being slammed open. Walks in the general education's kid. Shinsu Itoshi, if Aizawa remembers correctly. His fight with Midori approved just how wrong the entrance exam was to let this kind of power slip through the cracks. He'd make sure to correct that. This kid deserves a chance. What the boy says makes the unease he's been experiencing increase. The dread pools in his stomach at the implications. Eraser head. You need to save him. He's in danger. The purple-haired teen says urgently. His gaze is pleading and desperate. Aizawa knows instantly who the boy is talking about. However, he just needs to make sure. What's going on Shinsu? What's wrong? He asks cautiously, ignoring the way Mike's gaze keeps switching between them, trying to get his attention. Trying to see if what they're both thinking is true. Midoriya. He's in trouble. You said he had to withdraw for family reasons. Did he go with his mother? The boy's hands are shaking. His whole body twitches as though he's prepared to bolt at any moment. As if he's ready to go after Midoriya instantly. Calm down. Yes, his mother came to pick him up. Says it's a personal matter. Do you know anything we don't? He asks calmly despite the growing fear that's threatening to bubble to the surface. He needs to stay focused for his students. From Midoriya. She's bad. His mother she hurts him. You need to do something. We can't let her get away with this. She's going to kill him. Shinsu's voice rises with every word. The anger and fear evident in his tone. What do you mean she's going to kill him? She's his mother. The voice hero says, disbelief clear in his tone. How can a mother hurt her own son? I've seen it happen. She hurts him uses her quirk against him. She's abusing him, been doing it for years. I've seen it with my own eyes. Shinsu yells in frustration. Why won't anyone believe me? He's right. I've seen his scars. Another voice interjects. The room's three occupants turn towards it. There, by the door, stands none other than Todoroki Shouto. He has white gauze wrapped around his face and his arm in a sling but he's standing. Before our match he told me. His scars aren't normal either. I've only seen his arm and it's mostly scar tissue. Todoroki Uizawa begins but is interrupted by the fire and Isa's user speaking up once again. I'm sorry for just coming here. However, I was worried. I heard your conversation and Shinsu is right. We need to help him. He Midoriya helped me. It's we need to help him. Aizawa curses himself. How could he have been so stupid? Izuku was right there. He could have prevented him from going. He knew that the boy was being subjected by some kind of abuse but he let him go anyway. How could he be so naive? Not all parents love their children. His own harsh parents were a testament to that. But to go to such length to hurt your own child. Anger and guilt bubbled in his chest. He needed to go after them. Stop this at once. He rose from his chair, startling the other occupants of the small room. He'd been lost in thoughts there. Come on, I believe you. We need to stop before before it's too late goes unsaid. However, they all got the message loud and clear. This has been going on for long enough. They wouldn't let Midoriya get hurt more than he already was. They hope he would hang in there until they arrive. Don't let her. Help me. Don't let us leave. He repeated the mantra over and over again in his head as he listened to the short interaction between his homeroom teacher and his mother. All of his internal pleas proved to be feeble as his homeroom teacher allowed them to leave. Of course, he would. Why wouldn't he? He didn't know what he was permitting. His mother hadn't uttered a single word since she met him in the break room. Her silence was even scarier than when she would yell at him. The tension in her movements could be seen from a mile away. She was clearly angry at him. Did she watch the sports festival? Oh God. 
Did she see him using his quirk? The grip she had on his shoulder was painful. She's mad at him. Furious even. Izuku gulped as he thought of the punishment he would have to face once they got home. His arm hurt. His mother didn't give him the chance to get checked by recovery girl yet. Ada's kick probably fractured the bones in his forearm from the sheer force of the hit. He didn't blame him though. It was a fight. After all, he's one even. He wasn't going to be able to fight in the final though, was he? His mom made sure of that. It wasn't important now though. Shivers ran down his spine at the thought of what was in store for him. A phantom pain made itself known in his chest. A reminder of the last time his mom was this mad at him. The scar she left on his torso was a testament to that. Particularly terrifying and painful experience. They got into the car. The suffocating silence still hung between them. The tension could be cut with a knife. Izuku hated this. He could deal with his mother's normal shouting and screaming but this. This silent, deadly behavior was making his skin crawl. The drive wasn't long. Soon enough they were already stepping into their apartment. Inko opened the door with her keys and stepped aside, wordlessly gesturing for him to enter. He obeyed quietly, not wanting to provoke her. He was making his way into his room, secretly hoping he would get away from this unscathed. However, he knew better than to get his hopes up. He heard the distinct noise of the door being shut and locked behind him. Where do you think you're going? Her voice came out as a low hiss, venom pooling from every syllable. Slicing and tearing at the silence, successfully making the blood in his veins run cold, he froze mid-step as dread started pulling in his stomach. He slowly turns around to face her. No nowhere Izuku curses himself internally, the shaking of his voice exposing the fear that was creeping into his heart, ever so slowly eating away at his nerves. She took slow steps towards him, her movements reminiscing of that of a snake, slowly making its way towards its prey, ready to strike at any moment. Did you think you could hide this from me? Her voice was light and uncaring. However, the look in her eyes betrayed the doll-like smile on her face. Despite her somewhat cheerful and light behavior, her gaze showed nothing but malicious intent and volatile hatred directed towards him. Hide. Mom no. I wasn't hiding he tried to argue but was cut off by the sound of shattering glass. And Ko's anger had made her quirk act up, effectively rattling the cupboards in the kitchen and shattering the crystal cups there. This wasn't a good sign. She was furious. Her behavior would be unpredictable and impulsive. Shut up. You brat. I suffered years because of you. Do you know what it feels like to have such a useless idiot as a child? I spent years alone because of you. And how do you repay me? You ungrateful piece of shit. You hide this from me. How dare you? The house is visibly shaking by now. Utensils are flying everywhere, zipping around them, creating a small tornado. His mother's quirk has gotten stronger over the years. The woman not only being able to attract object towards her but also manipulate their general movements, effectively giving their trajectory speed and force. A knife flew past him, grazing his cheek. A warning. The pain is bearable, if not minimal. He's just glad it didn't hit his eye. Chaos, pure unadulterated disarray surrounds them. His mother's gaze is borderline hysterical as she marches towards him. She seems unhinged like this was the final straw. A pan hits his injured arm and he hisses in pain. This was his first mistake. His mother's eyes widen comically in realization as an atrocious laugh escapes her throat. That's what you get brat, playing hero with that quirk of yours. She stretches her arm forward and a knife comes flying towards her. She catches it with ease and lifts it to his throat. What are you going to do now, mighty hero? The knife lifts into the air and hangs right in front of his eye, threatening to stab him at any moment. He gulps and tries to step backward but a hand grips his wounded arm painfully, efficiently stopping his escape. He barely manages to stifle the cry of pain that almost escapes his mouth, resolute to remain strong in the face of his mother's abuse. She squeezes harder and this time it's too much to bear. He cries in pain and leans over, snatching his arm from her grip with a little use of one for all. Her eyes widen at the sight of the green lightning that surrounded his body for a moment. Her features split into a manically wide grin. So, this is it ha, huh? the oh-so-powerful quirk of yours. She coos darkly as she steps back. The knife still hangs in front of his face, barely inches away from his eyelid, so close it almost grazes his eyelashes. She sighs and the knife hits the ground instantly, clattering to the ground with a resounded clang. His momentary relief is crushed by a searing pain coming from his torso. It burns. It feels like he's being stabbed over and over again by a million knives. Right where his scar resided, he feels dampness spread. He looks down at his shirt and sees the rapidly spreading red stain. He's bleeding. It hurts. He feels like he's being torn apart, which is probably what's happening. He thinks he hears someone screaming. The sound is agonizing. It's only when he feels his throat throb painfully that he registers that it's actually him that's making that sound. His mind flashes to the day he got that scar. His mother was furious, uncontrollable. He's being ripped apart, it burns. He's being torn in shreds from the inside out. The pain brings him back to reality before he can recall the past events. He crumbles onto the floor, his arms wrapped around his torso, hands digging and clutching at his damp t-shirt, 
the aching is too much to handle. There's static rings in his ears and it's getting harder to breathe by the second. The struggle leaves him gasping for air. Tears roll freely from his eyes as he tries to hang on to consciousness. The pain is excruciating. Distantly he can hear his mother's laugh. Bile rises in his throat. His sight is blurring. Dark spots slowly forming in his field of vision. He feels disconnected, like he's here but not fully. It's been a long time since pain had affected him this much. He just wants it to stop. He wants it to end. He can feel the fast-forming red puddle under him. The last thing he sees is his mother's shoes as she walks past him with a huff. Is this it? Is this where it ends? Is this how he dies? The excruciating pain on his torso becomes overwhelming. Maybe he can finally rest now. I'm sorry all might. He remembers the months of training with his mentor. The feeling of finally being useful. I'm sorry Aizawa. He remembers the only time he felt like someone actually cared for his well-being. Cared about him. Yuraka. Ida. Hiroshima. He remembers the only time he felt normal. An ordinary teenager. The feeling of belonging somewhere. Shinsu. The first person to accept him despite his past and his cowardliness. Despite knowing the truth about his mother. Everyone, forgive me. And with that, I'll see you all in the next part. For those who are interested, we have a discord down below. Be sure to aim for the stars and drink plenty of water. And take care until next. We see each other again.